What's up guys? Welcome back. Welcome to day four of Day Cool Khaki in my real time life. <laughs> I took it a while ago, so it is fully kicked in. I really liked that someone time stamped my last video when they noticed that the day quill <laughs> kicked in. That was really amazing. Thank you for that. So I did receive some requests in my comments and then it won a poll on my Instagram stories. Apparently you guys are interested in me sharing my fragrance collection, my luxury perfumes. I've had some of these for so long. That's kind of one of the beautiful things about a fragrance is that if you don't store it in direct light, <laughs> it will last infinite infinite days, years, whatever. So I have had some of these so long that I think some of them might be discontinued, but I thought it would be fun to share them nonetheless. I will now commence with sharing the fragrance itself, the price, whether or not it was gifted to me, either by a company or by someone, you know, giving it to me, or whether I bought it, what the notes are, and what I think the notes are. <laughs> because you'll notice uh, some very distinct patterns and that is that I like vanilla, I like citrus, and I like rose. They have to be the right versions of those things, but that is pretty much like the through line of all of these fragrances. And just because I like vanilla does not mean that I'm going to tr try to find the one best vanilla. No, 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 no. I'm going to try all the vanillas <laughs> and I'm going to love all the nuances of all of them and pretend that they are different enough that they are different moods, things like that. So if you, relate to that. If all of that self-indulgence resonates with you, I hope that you enjoy the rest of this video. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with this one because it might be my favorite of all time. So this is by Rado, Seven Veils. My sister actually gifted this to me. I asked for it for Christmas a few years ago. Apparently it is only available in store, in like a Byredo store now. They don't sell it online. It was sold at Barney's <laughs> and Barney's is closed now. Sad, sad, sad. At the time it was $220 a bottle. I'm not sure what it would be now in store, but a few years ago it was $220 a bottle. Top notes, carrot and pimento berries. I feel like Byredo, his beautiful self that, you know, owns that company, I feel like he just kind of jumps the shark on all the actual scent notes. You really just have to smell them to identify them because I am not getting carrot at all, but I guess top notes, I'm going to speak like I have any idea what I'm talking about. Top notes are kind of the treble, you know, of what you smell. It's the kind of like high pinched whatever. And then there's the heart notes, he says, you know, like the main notes. And then there's the bass. And the bass is gonna be sort of the, the musky like anchor notes and stuff like that of the scent. Sometimes they don't have those things, I will say. And for me, I don't like scents that are too, too bassy because they tend to be Abercrombie and Fitch smelling, mahogany teak wood, not my thing. So top is carrot and pimento berries. Mm. Oh. Um, heart is glycine, Laurier rose, Tahitian vanilla flower, and tiger orchid. And base is sandalwood and vanilla bean. It has just enough sandalwood in it that it's not overwhelming and overpowering to me, but it is a very vanilla forward. It does have some woodiness to it. It smells like the sexiest night out of your life. It is the sexiest smell. It is like if you are wearing like all black and heels and you're wrapped up in a coat and you just like walk into some speakeasy with like low lighting and it's some pre fee dinner and they're just like, you know, asking you for your cocktail or whatever. And you're like, I'll have a dark and stormy. And then you like take your coat off to reveal this like gorgeous bodycon situation. And it's just like the most flawless night of your life. By Rado Seven Veils. So that is why I'm sharing the notes and then what I think the notes are. <laughs> because, <laughs> because that's why it resonates with me, okay? I just smell really, really gorgeous, sexy vanilla. Ugh. It's so good. Byredo fragrances are so good. <laughs> okay, well, that was a good start. Let's go. Oh, wow, we're gonna go in a completely different direction here. Probably the first fragrance I ever wore and I still keep a bottle of it around because sometimes I just wanna be that girl. Ralph by Ralph Lauren. If you haven't watched the Ralph Lauren documentary, is it on Netflix? I don't know. It's lovely. I love watching people be really passionate about their thing. And that is a very inspirational documentary in that respect. Regardless, 
for this 3.4 ounce spray, it's $82, so you know, semi-affordable. It's a, it's a youth fragrance. You know, it very much has that first fragrance kind of thing to it. The way that, you know, a guy might wear Curve for Men or Aqua de Giorgio Blue or what the heck it's called. So scent type, fruity, floral, keynotes, freesia, magnolia, musk. You know, it's not particularly complex. It's very lovely. <laughs> it's very lovely. It's very preppy smelling to me. I bought this, by the way. Youthful, bright. It's like, you know, right there with like Clinique Happy in the sense of just being sweet, floral, a little bit citrusy, a little bit kind of like tomboy. It's a lovely smell. It smells like, you know, your first polo match. I've never been to a polo match. But yeah, oh, mm. it still just rings such a lovely nostalgic bell for me. Definitely a daytime fragrance. If such a thing, you know, if, if such a distinction exists in your mind. Another white t-shirt and jeans fragrance, and you can see this one is almost gone and I need to repurchase it. So this is Fresh, Fresh Life. And it is also, I wanna say fairly affordable. The 3.3 ounce is $90 and it is the most t-shirt and jeans smelling perfume I have ever smelled in my life. And every time I wear this, someone goes, what is that? That's incredible. It's so good. So it says, uh, the notes are grapefruit, lilac leaves, I love citrus, transparent magnolia. Can you guys show me one of those? Silk amber, warm orange. Like everybody has just, especially like Bath and Body Works, I love, I love, they're like, a boardwalk caramel bourbon. And I'm like, what does a boardwalk smell like? Like vanilla air. And you're like, okay, I mean, sure, I guess. Tonka flowers, sweet cucumber, sparkling moss. Sparkling moss, what is that? I suppose you find that in the same world as a transparent magnolia. Bergamot, vanilla grass. There's no such thing as vanilla grass. Cypress, the style is sensual, immediate, and wouldn't you guess it? Fresh. Yeah, I would describe this as mostly mid and high notes. Same thing with uh, Ralph. Very daytime in that sense, it's not super bassy. And when you wear this, it smells like you're really clean. It is just such a refreshing floral and citrus type smell. It's, it's really, really universally appealing. Like everybody, like no one hates the smell. Okay, next. This is Joyful from My Daughter Fragrances. This came as a sample in a subscription box, I think probably from Petivore. And I ended up buying the full size of it because I couldn't get enough of it. That said, no one else in my life likes it and I don't know why. It's so good. <laughs> oh, I love it. Like it's one of the most immediate, hell yes, decisions I've made on a fragrance. You know, where I smelled it and I was like, oh yeah, easy, sold, done, add to cart, you know? What, but my husband is, I'm always like, what do you think? And he's like, mm. and I have no idea why. It's kind of like how he smells mothballs when I use my shampoo from Way, and I smell nothing, so I don't know. Joyful, oh, $85 Canadian. So I don't know how much that is American. I wanna say I paid $85 for it regardless. The featured ingredients are citrus, jasmine, rose, and sandalwood. That is just straight, straight down the middle. You know, that's exactly what it smells like. Top notes are grapefruit, orange blossom, bergamot, spearmint, and lime blossom. Super citrusy. The heart is jasmine, rose, and neroli. Neroli is such a subtle smell, I almost can never even detect it. Jasmine is, this is jasmine. It's like when you go and you smell, you know, the jasmine patch growing on your mailbox or like a honeysuckle or something. And this to the sandalwood base, not really. This is a very daytime perfume and it's sweet like a jasmine, but not candy sweet. And you get tons and tons and tons of that like really complex citrus at the top. I would say that's a really, really accurate description. It's super feminine, but also, a little off the beaten path because it's not super flowery sugary. I'm a big fan of citrus in that respect because I think that citrus is usually very universally appealing. Like that's the thing is, you know, of course I want to like the way I smell, but I also don't want to like annoy everyone around me you know, <laughs> by smelling like something that only I like. And I just find it so interesting that people don't love this because it is one of the best things I've ever smelled. Mm. 
It is. It's like rose citrus and it's one of, it's a rare, honestly, a rare combination of rose and citrus. You don't really come across it that much. And jasmine, I mean, it's so jasmine forward. Now that I read it, it makes perfect sense. So if you like the smell of a jasmine, this is it. It's so good, but I'm almost out of it too. Oh, let me tell you about my best friend. I would say that if I had a signature scent, this is it. Although I've, you know I've committed myself to a couple of rollerballs recently and they are in contention for my signature scent at this point. I'm okay with that being an ongoing process, you know? So anyway, this is Commodity Gold and Commodity toyed with our hearts for a while there because they were sold at Sephora and then during the pandemic they just dropped off the map. They just died. I remember Hallie who also wears this. Hallie's a very, very good friend of mine if I haven't spoken about her enough recently. She texted me and she's like, commodities going out of business. Get well, the getting's good. And I think that I bought a rollerball or like the, it's like, it looks like a rollerball, but it's a spray. And I went through it, you know, super quickly because I love it so much. And then I kept an eye on their email list for the longest time waiting for them to come back. And the moment this came back, I ordered the large size. I think it's $125, $105. Okay, $105 for this Gigante a uh, hundred milliliter bottle. I ordered it immediately because I was afraid they were gonna drop off the map again. It's kind of like if Baldwin were to come back or if they would start selling my wine in New Jersey again. When things get discontinued, I get very, very sad. Top notes, I love that they describe this. Recognized immediately upon application of the perfume. Bergamot, juniper berries, and camphor. I'm not sure what camphor is, but bergamot is a citrus. Mid notes, these heart notes appear once the top notes evaporate. Molten amber, vetiver, and benzoin. I don't know what that is, but I like it. Base notes, final fragrance notes that appear once the top notes are completely evaporated. Oak moss, sandalwood, vanilla, creamy musk. I would say that. This tiptoes right up to the line of what I can tolerate in terms of musk. If a man wore this, I would be like, what's up? <laughs> like, let me get a little closer to you because you smell yummy. It's a vanilla that's very unisex to me. And I don't really mean to necessarily identify. I'm not saying male or female. It's just like feminine, floral, citrusy, sweet. And then there's like the really, um, I don't know. It's just the way that they make me feel, you know? And this feels very unisex to me. Oh, it's just very, it could be daytime. It could be nighttime. It's a little much for daytime, but that doesn't stop me. And I love that it's called gold. I feel like gold is a perfect descriptor for it because it feels really, really luxurious. It feels a little bit flashy. You know, it, it does have something that's like a notice me vibe to it. It's main character energy, but it says gold has a rich history of being associated with God's power, beauty, and wealth. It's strong, sleek, and polished. Its purity exudes luxury and demands a rich sensuality when capturing its essence in liquid form. With its grandeur, gold was truly established around a feeling of indulgence and the ability to draw attention from across the room. I hadn't read that yet when I said what I said, but I basically paraphrased that. It is main character energy. It is an excellent vanilla. So in case you are playing along at home, that is now, that's two vanillas so far. We're at the vanilla count of two. We're at a citrus count of three. We have to talk about House of Siage because I'm on their PR list because they started sending me their beautiful makeup. And then they started sending me their beautiful perfumes, which I have to be fully honest, I would not be able to afford on my own. Like they send them to me, they are beautiful, beautiful gifts. I cannot afford a $360 perfume, but because I own them, I figure I should talk about them. This one is new enough that it is not on their website and it is called Whispers of Seduction. And this is the first fragrance that I have ever worn that my husband said, that is great. <laughs> okay, so, you know, there's something to be said for that because typically when I put on a perfume, my husband says that's strong. That's how he describes the smell, strong. And I'm like, well, that's because I just put it on. Can you describe the smell to me? He's like, it's a lot. This is a vanilla that has so much more complexity to it. The thing I will say about House of Siage perfumes is that they are balanced. A lot of times when we think of a luxury fragrance, we tend to think of things that make a statement and they tend to be polarizing in that sense a lot of times. It's like, okay, well, I really like it, but that means that, you know, if you're not a big fan of that one really big note that's the star of the show in that fragrance, you might not like it. 
There's something about the House of Siage fragrances that they balance it out with so many different notes in a fragrance that it's, it's never one thing. It's never like three things, really. It's a lot. It's super, super complex, but that makes it like unoffensive. I feel like no one is going to complain that you smell bad, you know? No one's gonna be like, yikes, that's a lot. There's just something to it. It's like, okay, it hits you at first with vanilla, but it balances it out with something kind of like a little bit more citrusy, like almost salty smelling. And then it has like a woody sandalwood thing when you put it on or like cedar almost, but it's also balanced out with something floral, almost jasmine-y or rose-y. And there's just something about it where it's a little bit more mature, I will say, but it's so everyday. Like it's so everyday. It's like you could wear this to an event. You could wear this to commute, you know, you could wear it to work and it could totally be such a signature scent because it has so much complexity. And I really think that, you know, obviously they all are going to react to your skin's oils and everything smells different on everybody. But this one goes very like vanilla woody on my skin. And I think that that's why my husband likes it so much. But as far as talking about like top notes, heart notes and base notes, it's mostly heart notes. It's just very, very, very balanced vanilla in a lovely way with like a hint of woodiness and a hint of citrus and and like salt i don't know it's it's really really excellent this one is my favorite one that they've sent me of the, or, or of the two that they have sent me i do like both of them but again this one's not even on the website yet but it is it's so lovely and my husband loves it and that goes a really long way with me because mikey doesn't like anything <laughs> So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the first one that they sent me. This is Whispers of Enchantment. The fragrance notes, sparkling mandarin, pedigree, and geranium are the top notes. So citrus and floral. Heart notes are jasmine grandiflorium, rose demacina, and wild sage. So herbaceous, rosy. And then the base notes are sensual musk, leather, and patchouli. To me, it almost has a mint thing to it because it's very clean like it has a really clean finish there's something wonderful about that it's like when you take a sip of wine and it has a really really balanced flavor but then it quits that's great you know it's like very very like crisp and dry and that's how this is it's this really really lovely thing that you breathe in it gives you a lot of a lot of notes a lot of complexity very very balanced and then it's done it's a very polite fragrance for being as complex as it is and a lot of what you're paying for with these things is if you are kind of a luxury collector this is all Swarovski crystals it comes in a gift box with a polishing cloth it's about the look as much as it is about the smell. So it says encrusted with over 100 white Swarovski crystals, hand placed by House of Siage Haute, oh boy, Joyerie Artisans, help me. Plated in precious metal, 18 karat yellow gold. Okay, that's real gold. Hand polished multi-faceted multi green French glass. Parfum concentrate with 20% oil, perfume oil. Fragrance for all. The Whispers in the Garden Noir collection is created to be worn by all. So it's unisex, made in France. I don't know whether the other one is intended to be unisex. Like I said, it's not on their website yet. Disclaimer, will cause instant rush of euphoria. It took me a while to like, I don't know, set my cynicism aside about the cost of these fragrances because I'm like, okay, like that's, that's a pair of boots, you know? <laughs> but if this is your signature scent, and or you really just appreciate luxury for the sake of luxury. I feel like that's what House of Siage is. It is truly like very balanced fragrances that are very, very easy to like and enjoy and wear all the time. It's not something that just sits on a shelf, but as it sits on your shelf or your vanity, I mean, it's encrusted in crystals and gold. So, you know, <laughs> they really, they've really done, done their due diligence to make it like a full experience. And thank you to House of Siage for keeping me on your, uh, on your PR list because I do enjoy every, every minute of it. <laughs> okay, let's go in a different direction here. This is Fleur Hanami. This is a totally different kind of fragrance. And I do need help describing the fragrance of this because it's weird. The top they say is fig and bergamot. The heart, hazelnut and white florals, and the base is sandalwood, vetiver, and musk. I feel like that doesn't really do a very good job of explaining it. The weirdest thing about this to me is it smells like a wax. 
like it has this vibe to it where it smells like they bottled a candle that's made of beeswax. And so it has this really interesting smell that you like can't really put your finger on because you're not sure if it's in the perfume necessarily. Like if someone were wearing this, you would just be like, what is that? It doesn't smell, it doesn't smell like a perfume. That's the best way to put it. And that's the way like a lot of the Fleur stuff is. It smells like uh, an environment or an experience or a time or a memory more than it smells like a perfume. And that's why they're so weird. And they also don't last very long. In fact, they tell you how long that they are intended to last. I think that this one is only supposed to last like four hours. So Fleur was in Austin and I was able to go and they, they gave me this. I went to their headquarters. They gave me a tour of all the fragrances and everything. And Hanami is actually one of their most favorite famous ones. And it comes in like a candle and stuff like that. Um, and it's super unisex, very light. But to me, it smells like a bookstore in Europe. A bookstore in Northern Europe. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's super, super interesting. They do have these, I think, still at Sephora, so you can go smell them. It's, it's just really, really hard to describe because, like I said, it does not smell like a perfume. Okay, let's go ahead and, oh, by the way, that one is $96 for that big guy. Okay, so this is very familiar to you guys. I just talked about this in my favorites. I will also talk about the other rollerball that I talked about in my favorites. But this is one of my recent rollerball loves. This is the Seven Virtues Vanilla Woods. And this was $30, kind of a lot for a rollerball, but I feel like, you know, they last longer than you think they're going to. So it is 0.33 ounces. And the notes are pear, rose, and vanilla. Fragrance family is warm and spicy, and the scent type is warm and sweet gourmands. And this company gives back in a lot of different ways. But the way that I would describe this as we move into now my third vanilla smell, this is, <laughs> it's like an elevated version of vanilla lace from Victoria's Secret. It's exactly what it smells like. It does have a little bit more woodiness to it, a little bit more complexity, but it's creamy, creamy vanilla without being Bath and Body Works, the warm vanilla sugar, you know? It's super sweet but not cloying. It's a very true vanilla. Like they didn't overcomplicate it. It's just a sensual, pleasant smell, but I also feel like it's simple. And that's why I do like to combine it with other things. So I have been combining this a lot with the Nest Turkish Rose, which we're going to talk about now because I love it so much. I do, I love both of these and I like can't pick a favorite, but this is the one that I, if I'm gonna reach for one individually, it's this one, which I guess would make it my favorite of the two. So this, oh my gosh. This is the Nest Turkish Rose Perfume Oil. I slather this on myself before I fall asleep every night. This is $35 for this guy, but this is an oil. I feel like it just goes a long way. It says keynotes, dewy Turkish rose, black plum, blonde woods. Again, what are we talking about? Wander through Turkey's legendary rose fields with this nourishing perfume oil featuring notes of rose, black plum, hints of saffron warmed by blonde woods. I feel like that's it's a job in and of itself is combining words that you can't necessarily say that's not a real thing, but like it's definitely not a real thing. The Turkish rose extract is blended with baobab oil for a formula that melts into your skin while leaving behind a long lasting fragrance. You know, just like anything else, as this wears in, it does kind of thin out a little bit and you just end up with kind of a sugary sweet smell, which again, it's very simple. And so that's why I like combining these two things. I will I'll just wear both of them at the same time. And that was exactly how I bought them was I was like, I want a rose vanilla fragrance and I just can like <laughs> roller ball them on at the same time. And they do, they go, they go together really, really beautifully, but they also wear delicately daytime-ish, you know, on their own. But they're very, they're much more simple. I feel like, I mean, no shade whatsoever, but they're mostly like heart notes. Okay, we're moving into some of my classics that I haven't really worn in a while, but I feel like I still have to pay homage here. The first being Chloe Roses. <laughs> it's, you know, it's worked down quite a bit. Oh, mm, I think she might be kind of close to done. You know, I've had this for so many years. Yeah, it's starting to smell kind of like wine. <laughs> I think it's fermented. <laughs> Is that a thing? I'm not sure. 
Mm, it did smell really good at a time. I think it's probably time to retire this guy. This is $125 for the 2.5 ounce. I'm not sure what size this one is. It used to be, I mean, this is sterling, I think, and it would need to be shined up. It's definitely uh, super tarnished, but it says classic floral bergamot, damascena rose essence, and amber musk. Airy, luminous, and subtle, like thousands of petals from a bouquet of fresh cut roses. Roses de Chloe is an invitation to grace. It is very straightforward, beautiful, vegetal rose petals. And I used to get tons and tons of compliments on this. And it has a lot of sillage. It, it definitely like leaves a path behind you. People are always like, ooh, I feel like I can always smell the khaki's been in the room, but it's a really, really pleasant smell. And it is the most vegetal rose smell that I have where it like actually smells like crushed petals, you know? I feel like a lot of the like mainstream luxury fragrances all smell really similar. I read somewhere or heard somewhere that they're all kind of made by the same companies. And that's why they all kind of smell really similar. You know, it's like Dior, whatever, and like Givenchy, whatever, and like Donna Karen, whatever. Like they're all kind of the same. But this to me smelled different enough that it was just one of those easy decisions for me. Back, you know, probably five years ago or something was when I first bought this. And um, it was, it was like a signature scent for me for a while, but I do like the Turkish Rose better now. And then my last one here that I've never actually used enough that I wanted to buy a full size of it, but I do really like it and I occasionally want to use it. This is the, it's like a, <laughs> a deluxe sample size basically, but I still use it of the Tory Burch Absolute. So Tory Burch Absolute, I'm not sure that they even still make it anymore. Um, yeah, it says uh, currently sold out everywhere. I don't think that this is a thing that they, that they you know kept making, but it's basically the regular Tory Burch fragrance but more concentrated, it's just stronger. But they have kept the signature around, it's only $76 for an ounce, which is not crazy crazy, but that scent is Neroli, Grapefruit, Cassis, Bergamot, Peony, Jasmine, Tuberose, and Vetiver and Sandalwood. So it's very Jasmine middle, citrus top, like slight base of Sandalwood. So it's like another very mainstream smelling, very, you know, obviously, feminine perfume that just smells kind of classy, smells a little bit expensive, but it's quite daytime and it's it's just really, really nice. It's, it's light without being, you know, boring. But again, I've never really loved it enough that I wanted to like, maybe it's that I like the way that it smells in the bottle and then when I get it on my body, I'm like, nah, you know, it, like all the complexity kind of falls away from it pretty quickly. And I think that that's maybe why I tend to go for more esoteric brands of fragrances is just because when you wear them, they tend to like last, longer and like the complexity lingers better. But aside from those, there are a few that I have my eye on. Atelier Cologne makes a couple of citrus ones that I really want. I want the lime one and I want their orange one. And then Diptyque. They make Oyedo, which I'm not sure if they still make it. I see it here and there, but not, not everywhere. And that is like a very wonderful, rich, like citrus smell. And then Eau Duel, which is there true vanilla smell and their bottles are gorgeous too. So I kind of think that those are going to be my next, you know, to me from me kind of things or like ask for them for like an anniversary. But yeah, I never really tire of the nuanced differences between like the different vanillas and the different citruses and the different roses. So those are my my collection and those are my favy faves and why I enjoy them so much. So I hope you guys found this valuable. I don't know. Let me know other stuff that you guys want me to make videos about because I didn't know you were interested in this until you asked. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you, that was a bird. That was a bird just flew up to my window. Hello bird. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.